It's Mermania here on Toy Habits, and today we are taking a look at Skeletor's underwater ocean warlord merman through the years. Toy Habits. Hey everyone, welcome back to Toy Habits, and today we are taking a detailed look at the Lords of Power merman from Wave 5, and we'll be comparing him to his Origins, Classics, Vintage Figure, and the PowerCon exclusive figure, so let's get right to it. And let's start off like we usually do by looking at the packaging, and this is the Lords of Power version of Merman, not to be confused with the PowerCon Lords of Power Merman that came out last year. So this is obviously a repaint of that one, and if you take a look at the front of the packaging, you can see that they have applied a Lords of Power sticker there, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. I actually wish that they would have printed this on the card back so you can see see the full figure in all of its glory. And this Lords of Power version of Merman comes on the vintage card back Masters of the Universe Origins packaging, which definitely brings back all the feels with those red rocks bursting through the Masters of the Universe logo there. And looking at the top of the back of the packaging, you have a very cool art scene, and I am not sure what the heck this particular beast is supposed to be. It looks like it's a cross between an octopus, a possum, and a cat with the whiskers. So not sure what that is, but we do see Tila riding on a unicorn, and I'm not sure if that's Bo's steed or where that came from, but... The scene looks cool nonetheless. I do love the water scene and also the planet in the background as well. And it looks like Merman's Sword of Rakash is charged and ready to do some damage. And taking a look at the rest of the packaging, we do have the standard figure advertisements that they typically put on the back of the packaging and also the instructions on how to twist him into powerful positions and hey check that out you can actually hold the sword in his hand funny that and before we get too far into this lords of power merman review i just want to make a note that this is a repaint of the power con version of the lords of power merman so we will get into that in a little bit and now that merman is out of the box we can take a look at him body part by body part so let's first take a look at his head sculpt and as you can see, this version of Merman resembles more of his mini comic version with his flare outs that he has at the top of his head and the sculpting that they've put up there. You'll also notice some sculpting detail around his eyes and his mouth. And I do prefer this version of Merman a lot better than the original just because he has some character. And I do love the wide eyes here. It just gives him a very comical look. And he also has a very goofy grin with some very sharp teeth. And if we turn the figure around, you can see some more sculpting detail on his head sculpt here where they put some grooves where the back of his head is. And now that I take a closer look at this, it kind of looks like melted ice cream coming down on the back of his head. And taking a closer look at Merman's armor, I do love the shoulder armor here. And it looks like something that you might find in a sea. It kind of has a seashell look to it. And I do love the bony parts that are sticking up on his collar here, as well as that jewel that's right in the center there. I also love the bony parts that are protruding from his armor here, and it looks like he has a chiseled set of abs, but it's the armor and the way that it's sculpted. And overall, I think this is my favorite version of the merman armor that I've seen so far. And I knew this armor looked really familiar, so I went ahead and got my Ricky the Dragon Steamboat Masters of the WWE Universe figure, and yes, it looks like they have reused parts of this particular armor, and the only thing that I noticed that was changed is this jewel in the center. It looks a lot bigger than the one that you find on Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, but you can see what a difference a paint app can make in a particular figure style and I actually wish that they did put a splash of color now that I'm seeing the Ricky the Dragon Steamboat version on this particular merman. And zeroing in on the waist you can see that merman was actually given a separate piece of waist armor which is actually detached 
from his chest armor. So you can see that there. You can also see around the back that he does have a strap. And I do love the way that this is sculpted and it kind of mimics his shoulder armor up here. And I love the little tentacle like things hanging down. It just gives him a very interesting look and it definitely completes his look as a creature from the sea. And Merman was given the standard Masters of the Universe jacked arms, but where you do find some differences are the sculpting detail that they've added to his forearm armor. And besides being a repaint and a reuse of the original Lords of Power version, I was trying to do a quick scan of my Masters of the WWE Universe figures and my Origins figures, and it looks like they haven't reused this particular piece before aside from the Lords of Power PowerCon version. But I do really like it, and I do think it looks like a shark fin on his forearm armor. So I think that is a really cool effect for Merman. And one more thing to note about the hands, he's given a gripping hand in his right and an open hand in the left. And I actually wish that all of these Masters of the Universe figures would come with a gripping hand because although, yes, it's cool to display this figure in a different pose and have a different hand sculpt, but these open hands are pretty useless because they can't really hold on to anything. And it would be cool to have his sword be interchangeable with his right and his left hands. And finally, moving down to the legs, Merman was given the standard Masters of the Universe leg sculpts. And what's really different about this particular Merman is his shin armor. So let's take a closer look at his shin armor here. And I do love this as it mimics his belt armor that we have up around his waist. And I do think it just looks like a more majestic looking piece of shin armor. And it just makes it a lot more interesting to look at. And I think it adds a a lot to the figure for displayability and just the overall look and feel of the figure. And if we turn the figure around to look at it from the back, you do see that there is no sculpting back here just aside from this line here. So really all the detail is in the front of the figure, which you're going to be posing it looking forward anyway. So there's probably no reason why they would put sculpting behind his shin armor. And one overall comment that I'd like to make about the paint app is there are two different colors of paint here. And I wish actually that they use that deeper yellow that's found on his armor for his forearm armor, his hands, and also his legs down here. So if you take a look at the figure, it looks like it was maybe a mistake or just a mismatch that just doesn't sit well with me. And Merman only comes with one weapon, and of course he comes with the Sword of Rakash. And you can see like the barnacle detail here, and you also can see the bone detail at the bottom. But what you'll also notice is that we are given yet another different yellow paint app and a different color. So we have his armor as a different color, his forearm armor and his hand are a different type of yellow and it looks like his sword is more of a mustard yellow so there are three yellows going on with this particular merman and here is merman all geared up with his sword and i think he looks great although i do still think that the color of the sword is really distracting from the overall figure but i really do like the overall sculpt and look of this particular figure and Merman does come with a mini comic called Sucker Punch, which is the exact same comic that is found in all of the figures from this wave. And I really wish they would actually make different comics for these figures as we'd love to hear the backstory and more history on these figures and more lore. Why just focus on Fisto? Is he the greatest one in the bunch? Maybe not. But it's funny that this one is entitled Sucker Punch and you probably feel that way if you've ordered the PowerCon set from last year to find out that they are just releasing a different version of the Lords of Power Merman like you have here. And since this is Mermania, let's compare this Lords of Power version of Merman to the other versions of Merman that I have. So we have the Masters of the Universe Origins release. We have the Masters of the Universe Classics release. Of course, we have this Lords of Power version and we have the vintage version. And I do actually have the Lords of Power version of Merman from PowerCon, but I'm gonna cheat here and add it in because I have not opened that set yet. 
And let's start off with the Lords of Power PowerCon Merman. So we're going to take a look at all these figures in reverse chronological order. And really the only difference here is a repaint of the PowerCon Lords of Power Merman. So you'll see some differences in the paint in the armor, different color paint in the face. You'll also see a different color paint on the sword. And you do get some bubbly effects on his crotch. And so there are some very minor differences here and if you didn't get to pick up the lords of power power con set this is a great replacement for that and next up we have the original version of merman from the masters of the universe origins line and as you can see the armor the head sculpts and the shin armor the forearm armor and the feet are very different from each other so let's take a closer look and compare each body part now and the most obvious difference to point out here are the head sculpts. You have the Lords of Power Merman, which also mimics the mini comic version that you'll find in the old Masters of the Universe comics. And you also have the vintage figure look from the regular version of the Origins Merman, where he shares the same face and same sculpt as Stinkor. And moving down to the armor, you can see that these figures were given just completely different sets of armor. And you actually have two sets of armor on this Lord to Power Merman. You have a piece of belt armor and you have his regular chest armor, where on this original Merman from the Origins line, you have a piece of armor that is one piece. So his belt piece and his shoulder and chest armor are all one piece that tie together. And my favorite parts of these reviews are the obligatory crotch shots, but this one isn't really obligatory, but I just wanted to point out that the original Masters of the Universe Origins Merman has the typical loincloth piece on his crotch with the belt underneath his belt. And the Lords of Power version is just given a standard crotch piece with really no sculpting on it. It's just kind of a plain finish, but I think it goes really well with the look of the Lords of Power version. And taking a look at the forearm armor and hands, you can see that the Lords of Power version is just given more of an upgraded look to the forearm armor. And it's also given a different paint app, whereas the original Masters of the Universe Origins line, I'm not really sure if he has any forearm armor on him. And maybe this is just part of his body, but it looks like he doesn't have any forearm armor with his sculpt here. And finally, moving down to the shin armor, you can definitely see a more upgraded shin armor on the Lords of Power version. And you don't really see that in the regular version of Merman as he's just given the standard shin armor that comes with his figure. And if you're on the fence about which version to get, I actually really like both versions and the Lords of Power version just looks completely different than the original Masters of the Universe Origins figure. So you could actually see this as a different figure. It could be Merman's cousin or his brother or maybe a distant relative. Who knows? They're obviously from the same race and they go really well together and you can put them in different battle scenes if you have a bunch of Masters of the Universe figures. So there's a lot of options for these particular figures. And now let's compare the Lords of Power to the Masters of the Universe Classics version. And you can see a ton of similarities here. And the Masters of the Universe Classics version is modeled after the mini comic. And so you're gonna see a lot of similarities here with the head sculpts and the armor and just the overall look and feel of the figure. And taking a closer look at the head sculpts, you can see that they are very similar and the Masters of the Universe Classics figure is obviously a more premium figure at a higher price point and they just threw a lot more detail and a lot more sculpting into this figure, which makes sense. And you can see some of the differences here, like on below Merman's nose, you can see that it's not as protruding as the Masters of the Universe Classics version. They also gave the Classics version a different eye sculpt and the Lords of Power Origins version, his eyes are a little bit buggy here and the whites of his eyes are more comical than anything else. And you can see also the differences in paint app and the sculpting of the ears here. The armor pieces look a lot similar to each other and the classics version of course has a lot more sculpting detail but you can see references to the Lords of Power version in this one that they've borrowed from the Masters of the Universe classics version. Obviously there's different 
paint schemes and paint apps and I think my original comment applies here that I wish they had put a splash of color on the jewel just to make this Lords of Power merman a lot more interesting to look at from an armor perspective. You'll also notice some similarities in the belt detail here, but the Lords of Power version comes with more of this dangly seaweedy type belt that gives him a very different look than the classics figure. And next up, let's take a look at the forearm armor and the forearm armor in the classics version is a more subdued version of this Lords of Power merman forearm armor. And I do like the way that this kind of looks like a shark fin and this looks more like a traditional piece of forearm armor for the classics version. And finally coming down to the shin armor, you can see that there are differences in the shin armor here and the classics version is just given a more traditional sculpt to the shin armor, whereas the Lords of Power version is given that kind of seaweedy tentacle kind of look that you can see up in his belt here. And last thing I'm going to look at here is the Lords of Power version compared to the vintage figure and I think all of my comments that I said on the Origins version really apply here because the Vintage version is really the same as the Origins version. So I just wanted to throw them in for comparison and so we'll just do a visual scan here just for the similarities and differences so we can move on. And last thing we'll take a look at are the swords and obviously the main difference in the swords is the color and the sculpting that they've done on both the Vintage Figure and the Masters of the Universe Classic Sword. So just wanted to show you some of the similarities and differences here across the years for Merman Mania here as we wrap up. Now, I must admit, I was pretty cold on this figure when I heard it was going to be a single pack figure, but once I opened it and got my hot little hands on it, I changed my tune. This is a great figure, and it looks different enough that you can use it as a different figure altogether. We hope you've enjoyed this review, and if you did, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up on the latest reviews.